And we are off and running on another season of Coyote Football, USD, opening the 2023 campaign last Thursday night down in Columbia, Missouri against the Missouri Tigers. And joining me now to talk about that is head coach Bob Nielsen. And Bob, uh, these games are always a, a little different to dissect than a normal FCS on FCS contest, certainly. Um, but as you as you break down the film and you, and you, you kind of um, digest everything that you saw from those four quarters of football, what really stood out about your team's effort on Thursday night? Well, I would I would say effort. Um, you know, we we didn't do some things real well in the first half. Uh, got behind, uh, but our guys came out at halftime. We made a few adjustments at halftime that I think were uh, really good adjustments, both offensively, defensively. I was really pleased with our guys' effort and the way we battled through the second half and and uh, kind of inched our way back into you know the game um, and uh, and made it a game that had to be played all the way down to the end. Offensively, anytime you, you bring in a new coordinator and are stalling a new system, you, you know it's it's going to take some time to get where you want it to get. And certainly that showed early in this game. First quarter, nine total plays, negative two yards. But after that, it, it felt like that group found a little bit of rhythm and got a little bit better, at least in some sustaining some drives and ultimately putting some points on the board. One of our one of our uh, keys was trying to get some running game established early, and we had a really difficult time doing that. And and you got to give Missouri's defense a lot of credit. Uh, they, uh, you know, they didn't sit back like we thought they might. Uh, they really came after us with a lot of run run stopping pressures, and so we really needed to open that up and and throw the ball more, which we did as we got uh, past that first quarter. And when we were better balanced, we, we moved the ball, uh, with, uh, with uh, greater effectiveness than, than what we did during those first three drives. Yeah, you did take a little bit of time to get that running game going in any kind of capacity at, at all, but I, from a pass protection protection standpoint, I know that was a big focal point for you guys throughout the off season and trying to get that a little bit shored up from where it was a year ago. And I felt like those guys up front held their own in that way. I agree. I think our guys did uh, hold their own. We moved the pocket a little bit, uh, changed uh, the launch point, uh, which which Aiden handled really well, made some good throws off the move, um, and uh, I think got some things that we can build on for sure uh, coming out of that offensive performance. On the defensive side, obviously, Missouri puts up the 28 first-half points. I thought it was more about the recovery of that group, and, and they really locked in in that second half, allowing just the one touchdown late in the fourth quarter, uh, and really keeping Missouri from getting into any kind of rhythm. They changed quarterbacks at halftime, but I felt like your your defense really responded. Good open, open field tackling. I thought they did a good job limiting explosive plays as well. They uh, uh, they play better. We we made some adjustments. You know, there was a certain run scheme that hurt us in the first half that we didn't uh, we didn't fit very well. Uh, Missouri capitalized on that. We got that fixed at halftime, uh, which made a big difference. Uh, the other difference was offensively we possessed the football more and uh, something that we need to be able to do. And we knew we needed to be able to do that going in and something that didn't happen in the first half. From an individual standpoint, I felt like Aiden Bauman had a, had a solid game. He took good care of the football, which we got used to seeing from him last year. Uh, and I thought he made sound decisions. And he had a guy out at, out on the field that night, Jack Martins, that, that really came out. And we, we've been waiting and hearing about a guy like Jack Martins and the potential that he had. He responds with a team-high eight catches for 89 yards and, and really looked like he belonged on that field with an SEC football team. Jack's had a great uh, spring and, and had a great fall camp. He and Carter Bell, without question, have emerged as our top uh, receivers in that room. You're going to see him on the field a lot, uh, guys that we need to get the ball to. And it was good to see Jack uh, you know, make a couple of contested catches, uh, You know, showed that he's got the speed and, and the athleticism to play with some of the best defensive backs in the country. So what's the biggest thing you learned about your football team through, six, through 60 minutes of this season? Uh, that our guys are going to fight, you know, and, and uh, um, you know, we could have easily kind of just hung it up at halftime and said uh, today wasn't going to be our day, and uh, but I was really pleased with the way we responded both, you know, offensively. We left a few points on the on the, on the uh, on the board uh, or on the table. Um, you know, we, we needed to score in those opportunities that we had in the third quarter to be able to put some points on the board to really make that a competitive game. Um, but uh, uh, we, we definitely uh, um, came away with that game encouraged in a lot of ways. We just need to be a more consistent football team. And another chance, of course, coming up this Saturday as you get set to open the home portion of your schedule against St. Thomas. Glenn Caruso and company coming to town here on Saturday afternoon at the Dakota Dome. We'll have more on that matchup with the Tommies coming up a little bit later this week.